feels like every couple of hours, the odds-on favorite to win the Big East regular season title changes. And that's where we are right now at CHI Health Center Omaha. The Creighton to Newton, now Sonogo with 10 to shoot for UConn on the opening possession. Quick release for Hawkins, and it's no good. Good defense. I thought it was a good offensive set that time by UConn. Hawkins able to get a shot up, but Trey Alexander navigated through the screen to contest. Nemhard saw Newton look the other way and attacked him. The thing that talking to UConn in two, threes now, you're not going to panic and over-rotate. If he knocks down a few, okay, but, you know, that is an added weapon when he can knock that down and bring Kalkbrenner out of the lane. Now Kalkbrenner being aggressive against Sonogo who wrapped his arm around him and Kalkbrenner scores. How fun is this going to be? It's going to be great. Now, I think it's very important that you get Brenner going early because he was dominated by Sonogo in the first game. Sonogo was able to drop 26 points, you know, in that win. And Kalkbrenner right there used his length and size to get that off the glass. Jackson hit a three in the first meeting. He misses that one. Weak side rebound for Caravan. And Paul Brenner the block. St. John's the upset over Providence in New York. A couple of missed threes so far for Connecticut. And Andre Jackson Jr. is Creighton with three losses. Tied for first in the loss column in the Big East. Trey Alexander changing direction. The high-scoring sophomore for the Blue Jays who lost the first meeting by nine against Connecticut. Pace is very important. Ryan Kalkbrenner was trying to back in straight up. Now look how deep and low he is in position. That allows him to absorb the contact, use that lower body strength, and move Sonogo back. Hence, you're able to pick up that first foul. Keep in mind, Kalkbrenner had two early fouls in the first game. They had to sit. How about Shireman here charging in from the baseline to score? So you're basically saying the way Kalkbrenner sets up vertically or not changes how much... Here he is again, Alexander just stapled to him, chasing him everywhere. Hawkins down the lane, missed it. Shireman had five threes in that Seton Hall game. Oh, what a beautiful thread through to call Frenner. But once again, it's the pace that allows Shireman to utilize that pick and roll in the middle straight. They had lost six straight November to December. A very strange up and down year for Creighton. Into the corner it goes, and that splashes down for Alexander. To hear and see what happens in the huddles. Right out of the gate. Two to shoot, Alexander really tough. Wow, come on! Good luck, I guess, I'm here. <laughs> Calcaterra catch and shoot from the corner he missed it for three Klingon's been very active very active tough pass to handle though there swooping in from the wing that's two for Mitchell thirty seven points That ball's deflected as well. Picked up by Creighton and a loose ball for Nemhard. He's in a hurry, got pushed off. Three for Miller, he sticks it. Creighton made two threes in 40 minutes the first time they met. The Blue Jays have two to this point and they're up a nickel. Have to open up. And when he got to a spot, he rose with supreme confidence that he was going to knock it in. He did just that. Aline, who was fouled on a three earlier, has five. Nemhard open behind Kalkbrenner to bury that three. Kalkbrenner right now only has two. He needs to have more touches to at least have Sonogo have to honor him, him inside. Remember. He picked up an early foul, Madama Sanogo. It hasn't really kind of gone back to that. 
No, he's not been put in many binds at all as Shireman got away from Aline and hits the jump shot for two. Doug McDermott, I mean Greg McDermott is one of the best coaches. Welcome to the Jeep Halftime Report, sponsored by Jeep. There is only one. Coach, how much of the scouting report on UConn covered Adama Sanogo dropping triples? That's the shot you want him taking. The issue is he's making them tonight, Rob. Three of five from deep. He has a game-high 13, but the Huskies trail by two. Rob Stone, Coach Laval Jordan here with you. You a fan of uh, Game of Thrones? Nah, I haven't seen okay. much of it. So Game of Runs is probably more your speed, right? Game of Runs I'm familiar with. Game of Runs, the back-and-forth scoring spurts in Omaha kicks off our halftime highlights sponsored by Jeep. Yeah, Rob, it's what we expected in this one with these two going back at it. You start inside with the Battle of the Bigs. Kalkbrenner there getting the best of Sonogo. And then you see Connecticut coming back at them. And, and to be honest, Rob, this one feels like the way it's been that Creighton should be up more. But Adama Sonogo keeping Connecticut in it from the three-point line. So when you, if you would have told me on the way in he would have 13 points at halftime, I would say, yeah, I can believe that. But nine of them coming from the three-point line, I would not have guessed that. But Connecticut just keeps finding a way to pull Creighton back in when they seem like they could make a run and stretch this lead out. Career-high three triples already for Sonogo earlier today on Fox. Another foul by the guy setting the screen. But his patience allows him to create that opportunity to get open. Not only is it a four-point play, but it's the third foul on Trey Alexander for Creighton as well. Shireman bags a three. First three for Baylor. Shireman Creighton leads again. Percent. That doesn't even sound right, Jason, when you say that. Creighton not a good three-point shooter. I know, right? It doesn't sound right. Hawkins again looking for an opening and the rebound, Shireman. Nemhard. Decides it whether I should pass to Newton, whether I should shoot it. And when you do that, a lot of times you'll come up short, and that's what he did on that shot. Paluma spinning, window no, and Caravan the board. Shireman trailing the play. UConn has numbers. Sonogo, and it's going the other way. Yeah, easy call that time. Sonogo initiated the contact on Kalkbrenner. I know he doesn't like the call. But watch at the end. He's going to jump towards Kalkbrenner right there. So he initiated. Good pick up on that, Jason. You know, every once in a while. Creighton by one. What a game this has been. Two of the hottest teams in the Big East. Shireman got wrangled. Still got to the rim. I'm really liking how Shireman is mixing things up. He hit the three before, but we've seen him get inside in the first half. Nemhard can't get away from Newton. Alexander for three. It's good. We've watched the post players all day long go at it, but it might be these hot scoring guards that change the game. Alexander on the move into Newton. He scores five in a row. Timeout, Connecticut. Jimmy's here, and so is Trey Alexander. <laughs> Instead of being assertive, because he can make that shot again, I think he's tricked himself into saying that he can't score at times. Them hard. To call Brenner right on the doorstep. They work so well together, don't they? bit more to get it to Sonogo who was open or take a dribble to the baseline and drop it in there. Critical turnover, lost possession and opportunity for UConn. Trey Alexander with four personal fouls. Starts his move into Diara. 
Turns him around into the lane and scores. In the clutches of Jordan Hawkins, who has nine in the second half. Now Sonogo. Hawkins on Kaluma on the drive. Sonogo fakes the three. Hawkins in the corner, eight to shoot. Down the lane, missed it wide. Rebound, Paul Krenner. You don't have to foul, but you might want to. Do you? Well, it looks like what a time differential is eight seconds. Oh, he missed it. Rebound rang off the rim, taken by Hawkins. He's got it for the tie. Timeout called. They're going to look and... For 12 seconds, then the foul was committed. One and one, Alexander missed it short. Need a three? They, they're confused right here. They're going too slow. You got to go. They have a timeout left. Not going to use it. Down by three. It's Sonogo. He missed it. Rebound rang off the rim. Taken by Hawkins. He's got for the tie timeout called they're gonna look and make sure that it's a three 2.7 left hawkins off the redirect ties the game for now and dealer's choice you talked about uconn having a timeout left well danny hurley didn't want to take it because he wanted to play against the defense that wasn't set so no go got a good look now what you talked about 18 offensive rebound none bigger than this one right here in the awareness For and it's a two-point shot. I think so. I, Jim. Think the, I think the toe was on the line Wow I mean we know the margin in the Big East has been razor thin, but this is wild. Oh, yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna overturn this It's gonna be a two-point shot Yeah Oh, that's easily a two. Now, 2.7 left. Got a foul right away, right? Foul right away. Now, whoever's taking the ball out of bounds for Creighton, have the four second count in your head, but also realize you can run the baseline. Try not to throw a cross court pass. It's easier to intercept. Take the ball to your teammate. And then when you get it, hold on tight. Yes. It'll be a one and one off a of foul. Klingon has the inbounder, Shireman. Yep. Put some size right there. It's a high lob. Kalkbrenner catches it and is fouled with 1.9. He'll have a one and one as Kalkbrenner was mauled. He'll go to the free throw line. Jackson the foul. And it was a tough foul because both were going after the basketball. So I get the contact here, but a very smart play by Shireman to get it in the backcourt. Everybody, nobody's on the ball. And here we go. Intercepted. Sonogo chops it away. Ball's live. Creighton wins. The bigs literally... We're in the center of the spotlight at the end of the game. Sonogo came to the middle of the floor, couldn't come up with a ball, and an eighth straight win for Creighton to go to 11-3 in the Big East. One of the hottest teams in college basketball keeps it going. What a game, just an absolute battle between UConn and Creighton. Final score, Blue Jays by three. After the break, Mountain West, UNLV, San Diego State for our entire crew. Brad Weimer, Mitch Riggin, everybody back in Los Angeles. He's Jim Jackson, I'm Jason Benetti. You've been watching Big East Basketball on Fox.